Alright, today we're going to talk quickly about how to set the spark up. So you've just got it out of the box, you've turned it on, you assume you've charged up your battery. You go into your phone, go into Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, and you connect to Spark RC. Now the actual instructions for this are going to be underneath the battery. So you take the battery off, and there's the Wi-Fi uh, password. If that doesn't work, then they're on the back of the controller. And you can see where it says the QR code here, the little weird symbols, and you've got the Wi-Fi name and password. So in case you couldn't find it, it's on the back of one of these two. And by the way, your phone is connecting to the controller, and your controller is connecting to the drone. So when you connect to the Wi-Fi, you're really connecting to the controller, okay? You open the DJI Go 4 app here, and you'll notice that it's, it's come on already. So what you can see here, if I just make sure this focuses properly, is various things. You've got this thing telling me that the SD card is too slow because it's not a, a good enough speed or whatever. No positioning, which means we're inside so it can't really detect the satellites, which it needs to fly. You've got the map here, and you've got the, uh, the heads-up display here. You've got the height in meters, the distance from your start point, which is here, and the velocity, your speed. You've then got settings here, this blue um, notch thing here, I don't know if you can see that, is the gimbal, so that tells you the gimbal's pointed about there. And then you've got the settings on the right here as well. Now, this button is the, the takeoff button, I'm not going to do that because I'm in my room. Um, then you've got the return to home button. I don't use any controls on the phone by the way, I only use the transmitter here because it's just much more stable and it gives you a better, uh, better control over the drone. This will record to either the SD card or the phone, depending on what's full. If the SD card is empty and it, you know it's got space on it, it will record to the SD card. If the SD card's full, it records to the phone. You can actually change that setting here, um, but I'm not going to do that because it's fairly self-explanatory. This button here will open the camera settings, so you've got auto and manual. I would suggest going on manual because when you're flying around, you know the the lights and everything will play havoc on the camera and you won't get a good film. Just set it to manual exposure, change the settings to what you want and leave it at that. Now, let's go into the settings. So the first thing that we'll notice is the home point. We can either set it as a point on the map here or the person, which is you holding the controller. Dynamic home point means it will follow you with the controller, okay? So you've got return to, hi return to home RTH, which will just tell it that when you do press the return to home button, it's going to come back to you. And then you've got the altitude. Now this is how high you want it to be flying when it returns to home. You, and at the moment it's set to 30 meters. Uh, you might want to set it to say 60 meters if you're flying around loads of buildings, which you shouldn't be. Um, but 30 meters is usually fairly good. Then you've got flight restrictions. So beginner mode will only let you fly within a 30 meter, I assume, radius of your home point and it will make it much slower. So I would turn that off, just uh, it's not really it's not really going to do much for you. Then you've got your maximum altitude, which is normally set to 120 meters. I'm not sure why it's 190, 120 meters. Uh, distance limit of 200 meters, that can be changed obviously. Um, and then you've got advanced settings here, sensors. And that's pretty much it for the main settings. Then on here, you've got the visual navigation menu. So what you've got here is obstacle avoidance. It will detect objects and sorry, it will detect objects and fly around them only facing forward because the the motion uh, the obstacle avoidance sensor is in the front. So and and there's one in the bottom as well, but there's not one on the sides and back. So if you fly this around loads of obstacles and you come back on a shot like this, you need to make sure there's nothing behind it, otherwise it will crash and your propellers will break instantly. So make sure you you do that. Now you've got gesture control here. I tend not to use gesture control just because, you know, if there's a flash of light or it doesn't quite understand what you want it to do, it might do the wrong thing. I always tend to use this controller because I know that when I input controls in here, it's going to do what I want it to do. You've got stick mode, which can, determines which of these sticks do the throttle. So at the moment it's set to this one being the throttle, this one being the movement speed, uh, movement around the uh, start point camera settings and here you've got the this sort of tells you how the Wi-Fi signal is doing uh, you don't really need to worry about that unless if you're flying in a built-up area which again you shouldn't be 
make sure there's not any power lines or anything near where you're flying. And uh, I'm just going to actually turn this drone off because it's making quite a loud noise. Um, maybe you can hear me a bit better now. So, carrying on, you've got the battery here, which tells you the battery. This is going to go away now because I've just turned the drone off. It tells you the battery. It tells you what percentage of battery it's going to warn you at and when it's going to return to home. You can set this to whatever percentage you want. I would suggest 20%, no lower. Gimbal mode, gimbal pitch speed. Now I would set this pitch speed to 10 because by default it's going to be 50%. That means when you pull this, uh, this wheel down here, it's going to smash the gimbal up or down and you're not going to get a smooth shot. We want a really slow gimbal speed, like 5 to 10, ideally. And we're coming to the end of this tutorial now. So you've got the video, video capacity, video cache. This is just for the phone memory where it stores the video. And that's pretty much it. All you need to really pay attention to is this bar here, which will tell you important warnings, like if you're near an, air, if you're near an airport or if, you're, if your battery's running low, if, you, if your satellite signal's bad, it will give you warnings and you need to pay attention to that bar. That's the most important part. And then you've got the different modes. Ideally you want to fly here with th two to three satellite bars at least. This one's the signal and this is the Wi-Fi. And this here is the battery, which is saying NA at the moment because I've just turned it off. And that's pretty much it. You've also got the map, which you can fly by certain coordinates. And that is pretty much how you get set up and then obviously to take off you I'll just turn this off so it doesn't actually do anything you push both of these thumbsticks towards the middle like this for a few seconds the motors will start firing up and it will stay in place on the ground then you just slowly push this one the throttle up like this obviously make sure there's nothing above you push it up and then it will go in the air it will hover in place and then you can control it from there so that's pretty much it guys if you enjoyed this video uh, you know, subscribe if you haven't actually got a Spark yet. There'll be a link in the description. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time.